Hey everyone and welcome to Skill Capped. In today's guide, you'll be learning the top 20 most effective rank tips that you need to know to start climbing in Valorant. We'll be covering tricks that you can use to actually climb faster over the same amount of games played, tactics that you can use to get easy round wins without even having to take a gunfight, and the best way that you should be playing on attack and defense, and so much more. So enough hype, let's jump right into it. Alright, heading into our first rank tip, your individual performance will actually impact how fast you climb the ranks. After winning a game in Valorant, you'll notice that there are green arrows that are under your rank. The more arrows you see, the more your elo will go up, indicating how much closer you are to ranking up. In order to get as many arrows as possible and rank up, you'll need to do well in your games and this means getting as many kills and assists as possible. More kills equals more elo. That being said, how much you win a game by plays the biggest role in ranking up. The greater the difference in rounds between you and the enemy team, the more elo you will get. So a 13-1 stomp will rank you up a lot more than a close 13-12 win as it will indicate to the system that the game was way too easy for you and you should rank up as a result. So make sure you're winning by as many rounds as possible and you aren't throwing away rounds that could make the difference between ranking up in one game or ranking up in three. And as we mentioned, since kills are an important part to ranking up, a common strategy is to play duelists such as Phoenix, Raze, Jet, and Reyna. These agents are very kill oriented as they have abilities that will give them an edge during individual fights and they have abilities that will straight up help you get a kill. So if you're stuck in the lower elo brackets where your teammates are less than perfect, try maining a duelist to get you to consistently top frag and climb to a higher elo faster. Moving on into our second rank tip that will help you guys a ton, try to memorize what areas of the map the enemies are playing. Enemies will usually stick to the same site for the entire half. So when you're on the attacker side, knowing which agent is playing where will give you a good idea of the enemy's team's positioning overall. With this information, you'll have a better idea of which bomb site to push into. For example, if you pushed onto the B site on Bind in a previous round and only saw Phoenix playing there, you now know that one agent is playing on B and potentially four agents are playing on A. If you were to slowly push into A next and suddenly see Phoenix there, you can suspect that he had rotated over from B and there are now less enemies defending on B site. As a result, you know that the B defense is weak and rotating back to push onto the B site will give you a likelier chance of winning the round. Taking it one step further, you should also try to identify where each agent is usually positioned on a certain bomb site. Many players will stick to one spot and never really steer away from that position. So if you know that Phoenix, for example, has been defending at Lamps or U-Paul every single round, you can target your abilities and aim at that position in order to eliminate him early on. By doing this, you'll be able to grab a ton of kills and you'll force the enemy team in a more awkward position as they now have less players to defend a site, which opens up your team to further attack it. You can also use the same concept on the defender side as well. On Haven, if the enemy Brimstone has been pushing and taking over Garage at the start of every round, you can start off with two players in Garage next time, or you can play a surprise angle to catch him off guard the next round. You've capitalized on the enemy's habits and now you have a man advantage and this will make it much harder for the attackers to push onto a site. Alright, going into our third rank tip, try to focus your attacks on enemies that are broke. Pressing tab in game will pop up the scoreboard and on the right side of the screen, you'll be able to see your team's credits, but you'll also be able to see the enemy team's credits. If you notice that a particular enemy is low on credits and you've identified his position with the previous tip, he probably doesn't have the best equipment and abilities to defend that site anymore. As a result, it'd be a good idea for your team to push onto that site and overwhelm those enemies. Make sure that you're checking in on the entire enemy's credits before doing this though. If one particular enemy is really wealthy, they may be able to buy for another teammate in which they'll actually be fully suited up to defend a site and this could catch you off guard. This fourth rank tip goes right along with our third tip and that is focusing on the bottom fragger and avoiding their top fragger. There will be times where a certain enemy is doing really well. They're winning all their aim battles and they're holding down their position on the map. Rather than continuing to challenge this player, you should actually just avoid them. 
If you weren't winning the engagements before, it's unlikely that you'll be able to improve enough in that one game to take them on. So instead, try to focus on where the other enemy players are positioned, particularly their bottom fragger. This player will be much easier to deal with, and if you can take care of him, you'll have a man advantage and you'll obtain greater control of the map and the round. If you eliminate another player and take map control, you'll actually force the top fragger to have to go into an uncomfortable position. He'll have to reposition himself or potentially push into your team to try to take back that control and you can then overwhelm him. You can swing the odds even further into your favor if the top fragger and bottom fragger are playing on separate sites. All you have to do is avoid that site that the top fragger is playing on and continuously push onto the other site where the bottom fragger is. You'll be able to get into the site much easier and from there the top fragger will have to retake the site which is much harder than holding the site he was playing on. With this strategy, you'll find yourself winning way more rounds, which will help you gain more elo and rank up quicker. Jumping right into our fifth tip for ranked, try to play the most valuable locations on each map. Each map has certain locations that are really important for holding in order to win rounds. On split, the most important location is middle, as gaining control of that will allow the attackers an additional angle to push onto either B through male or to push onto A through vents. This will make it extremely difficult for you to win rounds on the defender side if you give up this control, so make sure that you are the one playing this position in order to ensure that you hold it and give the attackers a harder time. Other locations that are really important to hold is mid on ascent as it gives you a lot of space to push sites as well. On bind, you want to play on A short as this is the main position that you get onto the site, but it's also where the teleporter is located so you want to play here to prevent them from making aggressive pushes or rotations. Lastly, on Haven, you'll want to play on B as it gives you the quickest path to rotate onto A or C if the enemy team decides to push onto those sites. Along with this, there are also important locations that you can identify based on the attacker side's preferences. If the attackers really like hitting the A site and you've been crushing your teammates at A, you'll want to play on the A site to help your teammates defend versus playing on the B site where you're constantly rotating over and having to play retake. Coming in hot, we have tip number 6 which is to stop rushing on the attacker side. At the lower rankings, the most common things you'll see on the attacker side are players sitting around not doing anything or players being very one dimensional with their strategies. They'll call for a fast rush into A and do that multiple rounds in a row and if that doesn't work, they'll just call for a fast rush into B and that is all they try to do. These rushes can be effective but all it takes on the defender side is one Molotov or one smoke to cut you off and then you are stuck. You're forced to either wait for the utility to go down or you're just going to run through it and take damage as well as going into disadvantageous fights where the enemies will be better positioned. So the issue with the 5 man rush is that you can be easily stopped. But the next issue is that you have nothing to go back to after you've rushed. A common call that players will make after the rush fails is to run away and go to another site. This usually doesn't work out though because you've made a ton of noise which lets the defenders know where you're going plus you're focused on one site and as a result you don't have map control anywhere else and the defenders will just have easily pushed the other sites and be ready to flank you. So as you get into the higher rankings, rushing on the attack should be used sparingly and as more of a sudden change in tactics to surprise the defenders. What you want to do in most rounds is play them slow, split up, try to isolate enemies and get into those one versus one picks. And once you're able to grab a pick, you can then rotate your team over and push a site based off of where you got the pick. That way you attack a site with a man advantage which thus will give you a greater chance of winning the round. Next up, this goes hand in hand with tip number 6. Tip number 7 is to stop pushing on defense. On this side, you're trying to defend sites and as a result, you should be holding choke points and pathways that enemies can take to get onto it, rather than pushing away from your site and risking getting picked. Pushing should be used sparingly on the defender side and it's honestly very hard to execute well without getting punished for it. If the attackers are doing the same thing we just mentioned, they're splitting up and looking for isolated picks, then pushing past the site on defense is giving them exactly that, a 1 vs 1 pick. Or even worse, you push up by yourself and get overwhelmed and as a result, you lost the fight and now your team's in a 4 vs 5 and will have a very difficult time defending the sites from that point forward. 
On the defender side, you should mostly be staying back at sites and choke points and only push sparingly. I would say you could maybe push once or twice a half, make it unexpected, but from there the best way of winning rounds is to play back and utilize your abilities and positioning to stall the attack and grab the frags. Tip number 8 continues our discussion on the defense and that is you should rotate fast when you're on the defender side. I've seen it multiple times at the lower ranks where one player is on B and several enemies pop up on the minimap at A and the B players do not rotate. They stay in place and only when the spike gets planted do they decide to start making moves. But once the spike is planted it becomes much harder to win the round as you have that time component where you have to eliminate the enemies quickly while still being able to defuse the spike at the end. On the defender side you need to pay attention to the minimap. Try to identify where the enemy pops up so that you have a better idea of where the attack may occur. If you see one enemy at a site, it's hard to tell whether or not the rest of the team is there, but you should lean a touch over there just to be safe. If you see two or more enemies, it's likely they're going for the attack and you should rotate immediately. If you do this quickly and your teammates are doing a good job of holding them back, you'll then be able to get onto the site early enough to support your team and eliminate the attackers so they don't have a chance to even touch the site or plant the spike. If you react quickly enough, you'll start to notice that you're winning way more rounds, you instantly rotate when your team is delaying the push, and then when the attackers finally have a chance to go in, they'll be running into way more defenders than they were expecting, and you'll be able to wipe them out. We brushed on this a little so far, but tip number 9 is to make sure you're looking at the minimap every couple of seconds to ensure you know what's happening on a more global scale. Constantly glancing at this will allow you to identify where your teammates are playing, who's still alive, and again, where the enemies are located. This is valuable information that can dictate where you want to be positioned and how you want to play the round. Pay attention to the teammates vision cones too to ensure that they have all the choke points covered and there aren't any gaps in vision where enemies could slip by and flank you. If you hear any gunshots or abilities from your teammates, take a look at the mini map to see if they're in a gunfight with an enemy and try to see how many enemies they've spotted so you know whether or not you need to rotate over to help them. If a teammate or enemy dies, they'll have an X mark indicating where they died. A blue X indicates a dead teammate and a red X indicates a dead enemy. This can be particularly useful to identify again those gaps in vision as well as potential weapons that are on the ground that you may be able to grab. Along with that, the biggest information you can get from the minimap is the spike location as well as where enemies have died. Knowing where the spike is will dictate where both sides may be positioned. If you see the spike as a defender, you should rotate over to where it's located and on the attacker side, if the spike has been dropped or you see a player holding the spike, you should be relatively close to that location to ensure that the spike is secure and doesn't end up in a bad spot. Speeding through into tip number 10, make sure you're communicating to your team even when you're dead. Even though you've been eliminated, there are multiple ways you can still contribute to the round and give your team an edge. When dead, you're able to get a much more global awareness of the map and where your teammates and enemies are positioned. Versus your alive teammates, they may only be focused and tunnel vision on one spot. You can communicate to your team with the voice chat, but you can also communicate with some of the in-game features in Valorant. For example, one of the best non-verbal communication features is the pinging system. Open up the map by pressing either caps lock or the M key and you can click on certain areas of the map so that your teammates know where things are. You can ping where the spike is located or you can ping where you see enemies and where you expect a potential attack. One trick you can do on the attacker side that can be really helpful is when the spike has been planted, you can ping its location on the map and this will allow teammates to identify exactly where it is and be able to defend it a lot more effectively. You'll see this really work out well when your teammates have been smoked off during a defuse and with this ping, your teammate can actually identify where the defuser is and thus they can shoot through the smoke and deny the defuse. Tip number 11, if the enemies are on the attacker side and are taking a site easily, you should switch up the teammates that are playing on that site. A common mistake players will make is they play defense with the same positions for the entire half. Sometimes the positions work out, but other times they don't, and this could be due to multiple factors. Your teammates may not be individually skilled, they might not have the right agents to defend the site, or they never played on that site before and have no idea what they're doing. When a site hold is not working, you want to switch things up and switch it early before you lose too many rounds. For reference, if the attackers have taken over a site 3 or 4 rounds in a row, then it's about time to switch things up. 
Going into tip number 12, we're going back to the attacker side. If you've been attacking a site for the last couple of rounds and it just hasn't been working, you've tried multiple tactics and strategies and they've all been shut down, then it's time to start switching over to attacking a different site. Like we said in the previous tip, if the defenders are well positioned and have good agents and good use of abilities, they may have created a strong wall that's difficult for your team to break through. If that is the case, it's time to leave that site alone and contest the other site. The other site has different players, different agents, and different positions that your team may be better off dealing with. Push there instead and you should find that this change of play will work out much more effectively. Next up is tip number 13, make sure that you always drop the spike at the start of the round on attacker side. Knowing where the spike is located is incredibly valuable to defenders so you want to keep this a secret for as long as possible. Likewise, you also don't want to peek or push with the spike as you could potentially die and give it up to the enemy. To ensure that this doesn't happen, drop the spike early on and only when you see a gap in the defense and your team wants to push do you want to grab the spike and attack with it. Tip number 14, play one area of the map and master it. Different areas require different methods of play and because of this, you want to focus on one spot and learn how to play that spot to its full potential. Learn all the ins and outs of that position so that you can attack or successfully defend it over and over. This will open up the map and give your team a massive advantage if an area is completely walled off by your play. Make sure that you have a spot for each map in Valorant. Map selection is currently random so you want a position in each one. Tip number 15, be unpredictable. I know we just mentioned that you should play one area of each map, but that doesn't mean that you have to play that area the same way every single round. Within each area, there are multiple angles and positions that you can put yourself in and if you consistently switch things up, you'll be keeping the enemies guessing and you can catch them off guard. For example, in Garage and Haven, you can look for an early peek one round and then hide in windows or behind doors the next and after that, you can play connector. Tip number 16, stick to one agent. This goes along with many of the tips so far. It's hard to be good at everything and as such, you want to pick one agent and master it rather than trying to adjust to your team's composition. This applies especially at the low to mid elo as your performance is the main area to focus on to rank up. Know your agent's purpose and how you want to attack and defend with that agent. As a quick example, you want to shoot Sova's arrows at the start of the round to get enemy information and use all his abilities in this manner. Tip number 17, call for utility when you need it. Oftentimes your teammates won't know how to utilize their abilities, so you want to help them out by asking for them so you can coordinate a play together. For example, if you have a Breach or Phoenix, call for a flash before you guys go into a site, or if you have a Brimstone, call for smokes before you attack a site. Tip number 18, pay attention to who has their ultimate. At the top of the screen next to the timer, an agent will have a yellow highlight indicating that their ultimate is up. Ultimates are insanely strong and can greatly assist with winning a round. Make sure you know how many ultimates your teammate has as well as what ultimates the enemy team has. Identifying where the agents who have ultimates are positioned will also assist you as you can avoid that area and thus avoid dealing with their ultimate. Tip number 19, this one is super easy to apply. Do not use your ultimates on save rounds. It's unlikely you're gonna win these rounds. So unless your team gets some early picks and man advantages, you wanna save your ultimate for when you have a full buy where it'll be most effective. And lastly, tip number 20, pay attention to the team's economy. Make sure that you're syncing up your buys with your teammates so you're buying as a team and everyone has consistent equipment and utility each round. 3900 credits is the sweet spot in which you can buy a rifle and armor, so make sure you and your team have this amount before going for a buy. Alright, so what rank are you hoping to achieve in Valorant? Let us know in the comment section below, and while you're down there, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get more premium guides like this one with one goal in mind to help you become a better player. We here at SkillCap want to thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next video and good luck out there.